Jean Benet's brother, Burke Ramsey, finally breaks his silence. Did you murder your sister, Jean Benet? The night that your sister, Jean Benet, was killed, there were three people in that house that we know the identity of, and you're one of those three, you, your mother, and your father. But in the 20 years that have gone by, you're the one that has never spoken. You've never talked about this publicly, and you've decided to do so now. My question for you is why now, and why here? For a long time, the media basically made our lives crazy. I mean, it's hard to miss the cameras and news trucks in your front yard, and we go to the supermarket sometimes, and there'd be a tabloid, you know, with my picture, Jean Monet's picture, plastered on the front. But they would follow us around. Seeing that as a little kid, it's just kind of chaotic nightmare. So I was pretty skeptical of like any sort of media. Like it just made me a very private person. As to why I'm doing it now, it's the 20th anniversary, and there's apparently still a lot of attention around it. Well, my goal here is that. You answer all the questions. You said, I can ask you anything. Nothing is off limits. You speak about this one time. Some people have speculated that your parents weren't protecting you. They were hiding you. Yeah. And that for this last 20 years, that you've been hiding out instead of just choosing not to speak. What do you say to that? For the last 20 years, I wanted to grow up like a normal kid, which does not include like going in front of TV cameras. But if you had answered the curiosity, might that have stopped it all? To me, it seemed like it would rouse it all up again. I want to ask you some tough questions, but first, let's turn the hands of time back a little bit. When you look back, was Christmas like a really big deal at your house? Yeah. Decorations in the yard, on the inside. My parents would throw a party every year. Hello, I'm Hudson Ramsey. Daddy's not here, but this is Jean Benet. She's four, Burke is seven, and we're going to welcome you to our home and wish you a very Merry Christmas. Now, two days before Jean Benet was murdered, that was when the party was at your house, right? Yeah. And you had people tour the house? I think there was like a like a Boulder home tour thing. Like we weren't the only people that did it. Right. They went house to house yeah. and looked at all the decorations. So when do you guys open gifts? That Christmas Eve or Christmas morning? Christmas morning. Do you remember what you did that morning? I remember peeking down and I remember seeing like a electric train and a bike. And I was super excited. Was John Bonet with you? Yeah. Did she peak too? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Did you get what you had asked for that year? Nintendo 64. And what did John Bonet get? I think she got a big dollhouse. We both got bikes. Do you remember the last time you saw John Bonet alive? I want to say it was in the car on the way back from the Whites. I think this is the last picture. Really? that was ever taken of her alive. <laughs> I don't remember the hair being that long, but... It's hard to believe that a short time later, she would be dead. Yeah. Where was your bedroom in relation to hers? So it was like kind of around the corner, through the playroom, down the hall. And this is your room? Yep. After you went to bed, did you hear anything out of the ordinary at all during the night? No. You don't recall waking up, hearing anything in retrospect? No. Do you remember waking up that morning? Yep. The first thing I remember is my mom bursting in my room, really frantic, saying like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Running around my room looking for Jean Monnet. At that point, I was awake. Why did you feel scared, you know, when, when mom came rushing in? Like I felt like something bad happened. She left and you could kind of hear her freaking out. Are you sure mom went home? Did you go down and see what was going on? Stand up. The next thing I remember is a police officer coming to my room and shining a flashlight. It was still dark when this happened. Yeah, I was just laying there. What time did she come in? 
early. I don't remember. It had to be. It was still dark, so it had to be yeah. pretty early. Did she turn on the light when she came in? I don't remember if she did or not. How long after she came in before the police officer came in? Under an hour. So she comes in, and were you asleep when she came in? Did she wake you up? She woke me up. And she's running around your room saying, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. What else did she say? Did you know she was looking for John Bonet? Uh, I remember her saying, where's my baby, where's my baby? So after she left, w w what did you do? I just laid there and didn't really know what else to do. It seems really odd to me that you're nine years old and your mother comes in the room in seemingly the middle of the night, because it's dark, and says, where's my baby, where's my baby? And then runs out of the room and you just lay there as yeah. opposed to getting up and going out and saying, what's going on? And then a police officer comes in your room, which I yeah. assume is the first time in your entire life that a police officer is coming well, in your room with a flashlight looking around and you still just stay in bed. To be fair, I didn't know it was a police officer. It's just kind of... But somebody comes in your room with a flashlight and you never get up and say, what is going on here? I guess I kind of like to avoid conflict or I'm, I don't know, I guess I just felt safer there. Were you curious? I'm not the worry type, I'm not the, I guess part of me doesn't want to know what's going on. <laughs> Critics would say you weren't curious because you already knew. He didn't have to get up and go check because he knew exactly what had happened. I was scared, I think. I mean, I didn't know if there's some bad guy downstairs that my dad was chasing off with a gun or, you know, I had no idea. You eventually do go downstairs. Describe that scene for me. I just remember, like, I, I have an image in my head of the kitchen and it was kind of it was really early morning and there are a few people around that I didn't really know. There might have been a police car, I think. I, don't know, I just remember kind of walking slowly downstairs and everybody just being like, hey, we're going to take you to Fleet. Somebody eventually told you John Bonet's been kidnapped, right? They didn't Somebody say kidnapped, they said she's missing. Missing. Yeah. And who told you that? I remember a, like a detective or something coming in and interviewing me. He told me... Were you scared for John Bonet yet? I think I was trying to be positive. Do you remember them asking you if you knew what happened to your sister? I told the guy, I was like, uh, you know, she's probably hiding somewhere. Did you check the whole house? Or maybe she's outside? Or The next thing I remember is going to another one of our friend's houses. Everyone was really sad over there. My dad came and told me, John is in heaven now. And he started crying. And then I started crying. And I saw him and was sad. So you go from thinking she's missing to she's been found, she's uh, actually dead, she's in heaven, your dad tells you. My that. dad just said she's in heaven now. And I was kind of like, how is that possible? Like, And what did you say? I started crying. I don't think I said anything. I didn't believe it at first. You must have realized this has gone way bad. Did you go to John Bonet's funeral? Yeah. Yep. The body of six-year-old John Bonet Ramsey was laid to rest in Atlanta today. But the mystery surrounding her strangulation is far from over. Yeah, I remember the viewing. I remember the casket was small and her eyes were closed. I think one of her eyes was a little bit like droopy or something. And I thought that was weird. How did you feel seeing her? A lot of sadness. I don't think I really fully grasped. Like, after this, I won't see her again. I remember my parents being really upset. Like, I remember my dad leaning down and giving her a kiss. Did you have anything to say to her when you saw her in her casket? Uh, I just kind of stood there, I guess, in kind of disbelief. Or I don't remember if I put anything in it. Was it traumatizing to see her? That was weird. That was traumatizing a little bit. I, I, like, had I ever been to a funeral before, period? I'm not sure. Who was with you when you were standing and, and viewing her? Me and my mom and my dad. How were they behaving? 
I could tell my dad loved my sister a lot, and they're both crying, just saying goodbye, I guess. In the days after the funeral, as a nine-year-old watching your parents go through this, were you concerned about your mother? I don't think I was thinking about it that in depth. I think I was just wanting people to be not sad, and but she would cry and cry, and then I think she would like maybe fall asleep or something, and then she'd start crying again. And they'd tell me to come upstairs and comfort her. Are you aware of these different theories that are out there? Theories that you killed your sister, theories that your mother killed John Bonet, and theories that an intruder killed John Bonet. Those seem to be the three camps that people talk about. Yeah, I mean, if, I know that we were suspects. I didn't, I didn't know they were camps, I guess. And these are people that post online. The shorthand is RDI, Ramsey did it, IDI, the intruder did it, or BDI, Bert did it. Do you know the theories that they set forth in saying that your mom killed John Bonet? I don't know the details, but I know the ransom note, they think the handwriting match. Have you seen it? Have you read it? I don't think I've read the whole thing. I've definitely seen pictures of it, though. Did the handwriting look familiar to you at all? Had no. you seen it ever before? No. I feel like the listen carefully is very distinct, and I've never really seen that. I don't know, I've never really looked at it closely because I'll see it and kind of get taken aback and it's not something I really want to look at, like a lot, you know? Right. Does that look like her handwriting? <laughs> Honestly, looking at that, she would always bug me about having good handwriting and she would like make me rewrite stuff to try to get me to have good handwriting and I think it's too sloppy. <laughs> The police believed that Patsy lost her temper with John Bonet in the middle of the night when she wet the bed. For some reason, it's upset over bedwetting. That's one of the things that's been proposed. And that Patsy threw her against a hard surface in the bathroom, fracturing her skull. Then she got scared, and she took her down to the basement and staged a sex crime and because she wasn't dead yet finished her off by strangulation covered her up then went upstairs wrote what appeared to be a ransom note and then at 5.30 in the morning started screaming that John Bonet was gone Have you heard that theory? I, I've heard the cover up part I haven't heard the wet the bed fit of rage thing what do you remember about that, about Jean Bonnet wetting her bed or wetting her pants? I just remember she wet her bed. What would happen when Jean Bonnet would wet her bed? What would, what would mom or dad do? Mom would change the sheets and all that stuff. And dad wouldn't do anything. He had to go work in the Did Jean Bonnet wet the bed? Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, did she wet the bed at six? I don't remember. Maybe. I definitely remember, like, her and me, like, wetting the bed maybe a couple times a week, two or three times a week. I and mean, it's, you know, and I think every kid does that, and you just have to, like, you know, it'd be kind of embarrassing, but parents would just clean it up. You cannot recall a time in, in your life that you ever saw your mother fly into a rage? No. Did you ever see her throw anything? No. You ever see her break anything in a fit of anger? Smash anything down? No. Dishes, lamps? No. Nope. Throw anything at your father? No. She wasn't into corporal punishment. She didn't no. spank y'all. No, she we never got. You. Yeah, we didn't get spanked. Just nothing of the sort. Not even close. Not to say she never got upset, but nothing near like laying a finger on us. You know, let alone killing her child. Did you go to the pageants very much? Yeah. I mean, I remember like, a, like one of the pageant things or something, she just like go out and just like, you know, like flaunt whatever on stage and she wasn't shy, I guess. Right. Did you feel left out of that or was that okay with you? No, it was totally fine. I mean, 
I spent a lot of time with my mom too. Did your mother have fun with this or was she a stage mom? I think she had fun with it. I mean, she did pageants. She was like Miss West Virginia. Uh -huh. So I think it was kind of a fun thing. Was she a pushy type or did she go with the flow? Mm, I don't remember her being bushy at all. Yeah. Little girls sometimes get lots of attention. Yeah. Did you ever feel like she got all the attention? No, it was never an issue. I mean, it's just normal to me. Let me change the subject now and kind of transition back to that morning. It was during that time that your mother made a 911 call. What's your name? Are you happy with him? the mother? Oh my God! Have you ever heard that 911 call? Oh, it's been brought up a bunch of times because they think I'm on it or something. Police investigators say that your voice was heard at the end of the 911 call. Were you there when that call was made? Uh, John says, call 911. And of course, Patsy goes and grabs the phone and calls 911. But when she hung it up, she thought she had hung it up completely. And months later, the police discovered there were other voices heard. Now, those voices have come into somewhat dispute. Some people say, they hear Burke's voice, you know, in the distance. In his book, Jean Benet, Inside the Ramsey Murder Investigation, Thomas claimed that by enhancing the tape, you could hear John and Patsy talking to their son, Burke. He claims that's important because the Ramseys reportedly told police their son was asleep at the time of the call. If true, Thomas claims it suggests the family was altering their story right from the start. Where were you when that phone call was made? It's in my bed. How do you know? I, I don't remember it getting up until my dad came in there. I just had laying in bed with my eyes open. And so thinking of what might have happened. Did you hear mom and dad talk? I sure mom like going psycho. Going psycho? Yeah, like well, like you know, Did you go down and see what was going on? Stay in bed. Happy. Happy. Former police investigators with the Boulder Police Department, Detective Steve Thomas and Chief of Police Mark Beckner, both say there was a voice at the end of the 911 call and that your voice was heard saying, What did you find? Did you speak those words? No. Were you there when that call was made? No. So you were not there and you did not speak those words? That's correct. It's also been speculated that your father can be heard yelling, we're not speaking to you. Definitely don't remember that. I don't know, unless someone erased my memory or something. <laughs> like... Well, a 911 call with your mother hysterical about your sister being kidnapped would seem to me to be a standout experience in one's life. I wouldn't oh, yeah. think that I mean, would it's... fade into the background. No, absolutely not. I mean, that's something pretty big that I wouldn't remember. So I just, I wasn't there. So you can say with absolute certainty that is not your voice on that 911 tape. Absolutely not. You went to see a, a child psychologist. Do you recall that? Yeah. You supposedly were asked to draw a picture of your family said you drew a picture of yourself and your mom and your dad, but you didn't draw John Bonet. Do you remember that? Vaguely. We came up here because we wanted to look at some tape and kind of get your reactions to some of these things. This was 13 days after John Bonet's murder. Nobody in the world has seen this before. But well, this is like the right man. You can draw your picture here and your family for me while you tell them about it. Mom. 
This is the first time you've seen it, right? Yeah. When you see that, do you remember it? Yeah. I remember the room. Yeah. I think I didn't know it was a psychologist. So at the, at the time, you're nine. And the observations that were leaked to the press was that it was unusual that you felt safe, that you showed little warmth towards the family, that you displayed an enormous lack of emotion and almost an indifference, and you had difficulty opening up about the family, similar to children who feel that there are things they shouldn't say. You drew a father, a mother, yourself, that John Bonet was not in the picture at all. And you said that you were, quote, getting on with life. Do you remember saying that? I don't remember saying that. What do you think about those observations? Watching the video, I, I think I look like a normal kid. I, I think maybe, maybe that's just my personality, is that I'm a little, like, reserved. Did you consciously not draw John Bonet? I don't really remember what was going through my head, but she was gone, so I didn't draw her. There's a second clip, and you're going to talk about, actually, John Bonet's death to this psychologist. Take a look. So what do you think happened to your sister? What happened to your sister? You killed? How do you think that happened? Well, I, I, I asked her dad, what did they find in the body? But that's what I found in the basement, so... What do you think you're saying there? <laughs> well, I think, I mean, she's asked me what happened to my sister. I'm like, well, she was killed, and she keeps kind of going deeper. She's like, well, like, what do you think happens? And I'm like, you know what happened, she was killed. And <laughs> she asked me what I would think. And so I guess theorizing what, what had happened. And I think I felt a little awkward talking about it. And I think it was just something that I thought everyone knew. And so it's like, why are you asking me about this again? <laughs> right. Sometimes when the police feel they have figured out the timeline, something surfaces that just throws everything out the window. When the autopsy was completed, the coroner had discovered that there was undigested pineapple in John Binet's stomach. Well, the police didn't even know there was pineapple. They went back and they started to look at all the photographs. When did John Binet eat the pineapple? Where did she eat the pineapple? And police discovered fingerprints on a bowl of pineapple left in the family's dining room on the morning of the murder. I didn't put the bowl there, okay? I did not put the bowl there. I would not do this. Set up like okay, this. those prints belong to one of the two of you. They did? You're sure? Fingerprints on the bowl are passies, according to police, suggesting that she's the one who gave the fruit to her daughter. But if Patsy did give it to John Bonet and is lying about it, then investigators wondered, could she be lying about everything? But what was more interesting was that next to that bowl, there was a glass of tea. And on that glass of tea was Burke's fingerprints. Did you and she eat pineapple together at any time during the day? Maybe. Like, I don't remember specifically eating pineapple, but very well could have like would you remember eating pineapple 20 years ago like um, you know there was a flashlight and a baseball bat found at the house and the investigators thought one of those could have caused John Bonet's head wound we know from the evidence that she was hit in the head very hard with an unknown object possibly a flashlight or similar type item the blow knocked her into unconsciousness which could have led someone to believe she was dead 
the strangulation came 45 minutes to two hours after the head strike. Did you hit your sister over the head with a baseball bat or a flashlight? Absolutely not. If someone in your house did, do you think you would have heard it? Probably, yeah. There was a book written by the lead investigator in this case that set forth some of his theories. He says one of the reasons that he believes that you are the culprit here is that on the day of your sister's murder, you never ask about her welfare. Well, it was pretty much just, hey, we can't find your sister. What do you think happens? And I was like, well, she's probably just hiding somewhere. Like, you guys looked around the house. The next time I talked to somebody, it was, she's dead. How did you really find out that John was dead? I think people are reacting to the fact that you seem to be unbothered by all of this. Yeah, well I, I can tell you I was very emotional at the Fernies and I would just randomly cry out of nowhere. I guess it's a combination of sitting in there with this weird guy that I'd never talked to before and asking me all these personal questions. It's a combination of that and just kind of, at some point you have to move on and I'm not saying I moved on then, it might have been kind of the other end because I didn't really get it, but you gotta start, stop crying at some point I guess. So the lead investigator thinks you're the culprit because you had previously been violent with John Bonet. Had you ever violently attacked your sister? No. Did you hit your sister with a golf club? And he, you know, he was out there with a the little wiffle ball, golf ball. I don't know. I just shoot off that behind me about that time. He clipped her right on the cheek. Okay. She screamed bloody murder. Did you hit your sister with a golf club? Not on purpose. <laughs> she was standing behind me and I went like that. So you accidentally clipped her in the cheek, I believe it was? Something like that, yeah. On, on your backswing? Yeah. Okay. Was that on purpose? No, did absolutely you, not. Did you intentionally hit John Bonet in the head with a golf club? No. There was some theory that someone had used a stun gun on her. Yeah. And then an alternate theory was that the spread of the marks that they were alleging might be a stun gun were actually the ends of train tracks that might yeah. have been poked into her. You had a train set at home, right? Yep. Did you ever hit her with it? Did you ever hit her with the train tracks? No. I... Did you ever no, poke not... her with the train tracks? It, the, the moment you said that, I was like, how would I even do that? Like, yeah. I never did anything like that. The autopsy did not identify that your sister was sexually abused, but experts that have analyzed it said it was possible. Did you ever have any knowledge or suspicion that John Bonet had been sexually abused or molested in any way? No. This wasn't anything you'd ever heard, thought of, suspected. She never said yeah. anything to you. You never saw anything that. Absolutely nothing that would lead me to believe that anybody was sexually abusing her in any way. Uh, Let me ask you just straight up Did you ever sexually abuse John Bonet? No, absolutely not. There was a footprint in the mold on the ground of the basement. And the investigators thought that it was from a hiking boot. Yeah. Did, did you own any hiking boots that you might have worn in the basement at some time? Yeah, I did. I don't remember the brand, but I, I remember it had a little compass on the shoelace. And the investigators point to that footprint as evidence against you. Yeah. What's your response to that? It's my house. I went and played in the basement all the time with the train set. So if, if they determined to, that to be my footprint, that doesn't really prove anything. Let's clear this up once and for all. 
Did you do anything to harm your sister, John Bonet? No. Did you murder your sister, John Bonet? No. There still are people that believe that you killed your sister. Yeah. What, what do you say about that? <laughs> Look at the evidence, or the lack thereof. Part of their rationale, these people say you are the only one that your parents would go to the lengths that they went to to cover up everything that happened. They're talking about fabricating this ransom note. They're talking about if she was strangled, then causing the head injury. All of this cover-up was all done to protect you because they didn't want to lose two children. That's their theory. I don't know if to say that because I know that's not what happened. There's, there's been a few people that said it's not even physically possible for a nine-year-old to do that. Like, you won't find any evidence because that's not what happened. I know I didn't do it. And I know what you're talking about. I mean, they're saying the force of the blow, the actual act of the strangulation for a child that weighed 60 pounds at the time. Yeah. Just physically, it doesn't work. How would they have broken into the house, do you think? You know, I've heard the basement window. I remember for a long time, I, I think I unlocked the front door during Christmas Day, and I always felt bad about doing that. Not that a locked door would stop somebody if they wanted to do something like that. Do you have any knowledge of who did murder your sister, John Bonet? I've kind of always just thought it was like a pedophile who saw her at one of the pageants and snuck in and, you know, who knows, but... Could they have toured your home and doing these Christmas tours or something? It's possible. I never really thought about that. Your best guess is that it might have been through a pageant? Yeah, it's probably some pedophile in the pageant audience. Did you witness anything that night that over the last 20 years you have kept a secret? No. I don't know anything more than what everybody else already knows. One of the most important findings in the autopsy was the DNA found underneath her fingernails. When murder victims are being attacked, they generally claw at their offender. And that's what John Bonet did. This Colorado Bureau of Investigation report shows that tiny amounts of DNA were found under John Bonet's fingernails and in her underwear. And that DNA did not match John, Patsy, or anyone in the Ramsey family. They took DNA samples from you, right? Yeah, I think so. How'd they do it? What'd they do? I remember taking fingerprints. I don't remember how they did the DNA. They might have swab. I think they swab something. Are you surprised that people continue to treat you as a suspect? It blows my mind. What more evidence do you need that we didn't do it? This DNA evidence that you gave, it not only says it wasn't you, it says it was an unknown male. Yeah. DNA was present. Touch DNA and then also in her underwear. Yeah. So it completely scientifically excludes yeah. anyone from the Ramsey family. I don't know what else one would need to convince them that we didn't do it. What more do you need to stop looking at us and to start looking for the person who actually did it? Has there ever been a part of you that resents John Bonet for everything this has caused in your life? I resent the person who did it. Whoever killed her threw a wrench in my life, in my family's life. In any case, there are many, many suspects. Boulder police are now backtracking and re-interviewing possible suspects like the man who played Santa Claus at the Ramsey's Christmas party. I know I didn't do it, so I'm not nervous. I'm not worried about it. Did John Bonet ever say anything about Santa coming to see her after that party? Not that I remember. You don't remember anything about that? No. Okay. She didn't ever say she saw Santa again? No, I don't remember okay. her saying anything like that. It's not a DNA match. This is a DNA case. Find the person who donated the DNA, you've got your murderer. You were 
19 when your mom passed away? Yeah. Patsy Ramsey battled ovarian cancer on and off since 1993. Friends described her as a brave fighter. When death was imminent, did she have this case and John Bonet on her mind? Maybe, probably. I, I think she more just had family on her mind, and I think she was kind of sad that she wouldn't get to see me go through college and finish growing up. Do you think all of this stress and pressure contributed to her demise? I think it didn't help, you know. There is such a body of evidence that exonerates you, your parents, the whole family here. A lot of that came to real light after your mother had passed. How do you feel about that? We all knew it, in our, you know, our friends knew it. We all know in our hearts that we didn't do anything. It's kind of something we knew all along. You talked about the media over these 20 years. What are the most hurtful things that you've seen these people say about you and your family that you want to set the record straight on? I mean, the obvious one is that I killed my sister, that my parents killed my sister, and people still can't get that in their head that we didn't do it. Some of these outlets scream these headlines like it's fact, breaking news. Yeah. Burt did it. You know, the Ramsey's guilty. And then, of course, the story doesn't back it up, but they say that like it's fact. They tend to blow stuff out of proportion all the time, like when the Boulder police came and basically showed up by surprise at my door and asked to do an interview, and it was exam week. So I just said, uh, it's exam week, I don't have time this week, sorry. A few months later, it blew up in a huge news story. Two members of the Boulder Police Department gave Burke a business card and invited him to contact them if he had any further comments to offer. So why do you suppose, after more than a decade later, they're knocking on your door wanting to talk to you again? I don't know. I think if they really thought they could get a lot of value out of talking to me, they would have done it the right way. You know, they would have set something up and... Did they come back after that? No, I never heard back. Do you feel like John Bonet's watching over you now? Yeah, and my mom and my grandma. Do you think your mom and John Bonet are together again? Yeah. Sometimes I would talk to her. When you talk to her, what would you say? Oh, just like if there's some important thing I was doing, like, hey, thanks for looking out for me, or hope you're looking out for me. Or, you know, hope you're having fun up there, because I'm taking some tests, or, you know, like, like, I wish I was up there right now. You know? Do you ever think how your life would be if she was alive? Yeah, sometimes if I'm at the beach or something, and or in the car, I'll think if she was right there next to me. And... Do you think this crime will be solved in your lifetime? You have to keep the hope alive that it will. I don't know, but you gotta never give up. How did the two of you get along? I remember we teased a lot in the car, like on road trips and stuff. It's, sometimes they'd be like, stop it, but you know, overall it was fun. And I think it was a pretty normal brother-sister thing. <laughs> We used to fight over, like, who would push the button on the elevator. I still think about, you know, every time I go to the elevator, I still think about that. Has there ever been a time in this 20-year period where you've said, I'm going to devote myself to finding out who did this to my sister? I've often thought about doing that. I think it's more as, like, as long as I know somebody's still working on it. You don't want her to be forgotten. You know, I don't, I don't want anybody to stop working on the case. I want them to focus on finding the real killer and not keep making up bogus theories about me and my parents. I want to honor her memory uh, by doing this and make it all about remembering her. Burke Ramsey was nine years old when his sister John Bonet was murdered. He's 29 today. He lives a quiet life in the Midwest and works with computers. He hopes that by speaking out, he honored the memory of his sister, John Bonet, on the 20th anniversary of her murder. There's been a lot of talk over the last week about Burke Ramsey's demeanor during his interview with me. That his smile and laugh seemed out of place, especially when discussing such serious 
and tragic subject matter. You must remember, as I said Thursday, until now, Burke has never spoken publicly about this traumatic part of his life. He was shielded for decades by his parents, and so he is a bit nervous and socially uncomfortable. It was also noted that Burke didn't cry. It's been 20 years since John Bonet's death. He says he shed many tears over the years, but is very private with his emotions. You've heard me say many times, grief is a very individual process. There is no right or wrong way to do it.